Fox News used Memorial Day to push for privatization of the VA. A couple of the gentlemen talked about how they felt like they were just treated like a number. They were treated like the problem. Why are you trying to come back and get, get, get this care? Come back five months from now and be grateful for it. These guys are grateful. They're, vic they're not victims. They just want the VA to work. That was Pete Hegseth exactly one year ago on this program, right after the VA scandal first broke, exposing long wait times, inadequate care for our veterans. But has anything really improved since then, or are we still failing our heroes? Well, joining us now with more is CEO of Concerned Veterans for America and Fox News contributor Pete Hegseth. Good morning, and thanks for joining us, Pete. Thanks for having me. We uh, saw House Speaker John Boehner uh, just tear into the leadership of the VA this week and say little has been done since Eric Shinseki resigned. Do you agree? Do you think it's it, a scale of 1 to 10? How would you rate it? Well, unfortunately, I'd have to rate it a zero to a 0 .5. Uh, mm -hmm. There's been tiny bits of progress here and there, but I've felt like a broken record over the last year, saying many of the same things. This is still a dysfunctional, broken culture. You can't steer a ship of 340,000 employees and $160 billion. That, that bureaucracy doesn't move quickly. And unfortunately, zero people, now one, some say one, but by our count, zero people have been held accountable or fired for the scandal that occurred a year ago. Uh, wait times are no better today than they were a year ago. Veterans have a choice card, but they're not allowed to use it unless they call a gatekeeper at the VA. So there is no real accountability. There is no culture change. Um, without that culture, culture change, you're not going to see uh, an, an environment of customer service that veterans deserve. Pete, can you tell us why Secretary McDonald came in? Not only is he a veteran, but he has a business background. And President Obama mm -hmm. said, look, this is someone who's going to take a fresh look uh, and try to shake up this government bureaucracy. Has the bureaucracy just simply won? Yeah, I think so. We had a lot of hope that Secretary McDonald would be that kind of turnaround guy to tell hard truths. Uh, unfortunately, since then, he's become a bit more of a, a VA apologist than we would want, uh, de defending the, the bureaucracy more than sort of rick ripping the scab off and saying, hey, here are all the problems. Here's how we're going to aggressively fix them and change the legacy of this department. So, uh, you know, we're, we're hopeful that in some ways some of the reforms he's trying may eventually uh, bring about better customer service. But you, we haven't changed the incentive structure. We haven't changed VA competing for, for veterans as customers. And as a result, the culture just isn't going to change until you do that. You know what he's arguing for, right? He's arguing for privatization. He's arguing for more capitalism. He's arguing to make it for profit. That's what he's talking about. And the thing that drives me crazy is that they think they're being more patriotic here when they make this argument. But all you have to do is look at the basic facts of our for-profit capitalistic healthcare system and health insurance system, and you realize that's the part, that's the biggest disaster. You have to remember, 45,000 people were dying every single year in America because they didn't have access to basic care because we had the system that he's now advocating for to change the VA to. Okay, that's a problem, and, uh, you know, we should not stand for that. They want to drag the quality down and the cost up even more. Now, here's where they'll respond and say, but Kyle, did you not see the VA scandal that recently happened? The VA is in shambles. It's an absolute mess. So how could you not be in favor of doing reform? Wait, wait, I am in favor of doing reform. I just don't want to do the reform that's going to make the problem worse, which is what they're arguing for. So why is there a problem? And what was the problem exactly? Well, the problem was that that people were on wait lists and they weren't getting the care that they needed and that was directly tied to the fact that the VA was inefficient because it was wildly underfunded so that's the issue the issue is the funding and by the way who's to blame for that issue well why don't we go ahead and look at some specifics here to answer that question let's go to the Washington Post on February 27th 2014 they said the following about this issue quote Veterans groups expressed frustration with a VA bill's failure, saying it fell victim to Washington's partisan politics. The measure was four votes shy of a 60-vote threshold required for it to have advanced. The legislation called for expanding several veterans' benefits, including dental and medical care, educational assistance, and the caretakers that currently apply only to post-September 11th veterans. It also required the repeal of a recent cut to the cost of living adjustments for future military retirees and would have allowed VA, the VA to open 27 new health facilities 
So let's understand what that was. That was a bill to substantively address the shortfall in funding for the VA. And it was filibustered by the Republicans. There were well over 50 votes for it, but the Republicans filibustered it and blocked the creation of 27 new VA clinics. So the problem was, hey man, people are on waiting lists. This isn't fair. We got to do something about this. I mean, maybe we could like open some new facilities or something like that. That would absolutely help the problem. That would fix the problem. The Republicans filibustered that. 27 new VA clinics. The Democrats said, yes, let's do it. We need to do this. We need to, need to address the, the problem in funding. The Republicans blocked it. And then they have the nerve to go out there and blame the Democrats for it. Motherfucker, look in the mirror. You're the people that blocked it. And now your solution would make the problem worse. And by the way, they succeeded in getting one of their uh, solutions through. They gave people a choice card, which made it so that, you know, if you go to the VA, now you have the option. Oh, you have the option of going uh, on the private market instead of going with the big, bad government health care facilities that we purposely underfunded. But now you can go to the, the private sector. And what is it? It's a Trojan horse to try to privatize the entire industry. So notice. He's so concerned about the problem here, he's like, well, the problem hasn't gotten any better. Okay, asshole, I agree. But you got the reform you wanted! If we partially privatized the VA, we're giving people the option to go on the private sector now, and you're still complaining. So my only conclusion I could take away from that is, your solution made the problem worse, just like I said it would. The real solution, like I just laid out for you, is to actually pass the bills that the Democrats propose that were in favor of the VA and were in favor of funding them and keeping it a, a government program. But no, you oppose that because you oppose it on principle. It's not about what's actually better for the, for the troops. It's not about that at all. It's all about pushing your ideology, which is absolutely going to make it worse, and it's been proven.